you know, I might not ought to do videos when I'm angry, but this angered me. I've been getting notices from the Census Bureau. And mind you, in 2020, I filled out the census and I mailed it in, not because I wanted to, but because I don't want them corn balls coming to my house and coming in and filling out a bunch of junk that's none of their business. I have nothing to hide, mind you, because I live a good, clean life between God and I, and I don't break any laws or I don't do any evil. But it makes me so angry. They kept sending me, I already, I already filled it out in 2020, and now in 2024, they're sending me another one telling me I have to fill it out by law. So I just tore it up and threw it in the trash a few times and then this one, they said, final notice before we send somebody out to your house. And I don't want to be aggravated with that. So I asked the Lord, and it seemed like, okay, go ahead and do it. And then I thought about Joseph and Mary when they went for the census when Mary was pregnant with Jesus. And I thought, well, if they had to take their census, then I guess it's okay for me to take mine. Um, but it's none of their business. The devil is the one that does the census, he treats us like we're animals, we're livestock, we're slaves in his herd. We're not children like we are to God. But I just wanted to go over it some and show you how ridiculously evil and perverted the world has become. Now, this is, they call it the American Community Survey. And it tells you the questionnaire. And it says, um, you have two ways to respond, blah, 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 blah. And include everyone that's living in your house. And then they want your name for person one, and they ask you, how is this person related? And what is this person's sex, male or female? How old? And what's your date of birth? And are you a Hispanic, Mexican, Puerto Rican, Cuban, blah, blah, blah. And uh, in, God's in God's kingdom, there's neither, no races. There's neither black nor white nor male nor female. We're spiritual. We're holy. And this is ungodliness. Okay. And then they go, what's the person's you know, second name, and then they start asking all these questions about, you check one of these, um, opposite sex, husband or wife or spouse, opposite sex, unmarried partner, same sex, husband, wife, spouse, same sex, unmarried partner, biological son or daughter, adopted son or daughter, stepson or daughter, brother or sister, father or mother, grandchild, parent-in-law, son-in-law or daughter-in-law, other relative, roommate or housemate, foster child, other non-relative and then what is person number two's race and blah 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 and their age and i think they're asking their social security number here or maybe it's just their date of birth i didn't put my social security number on here then they go through the same thing about what sex they are and what race they are and they go through all these different people that might live in your house blah 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 and then they ask your housing um what kind of describes your building? A mobile home, one family house, one family house attached, a building with two apartments, building with three or four apartments, blah, 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 blah. How many acres in this house? In the past 12 months, what were the actual sales of all agricultural products from this property? About when was this building first built? How many of these rooms are bedrooms? When did this person move into this house? And then... Um, Hot or cold running water, a bathtub or shower, a sink with a faucet, a stove, a range, a refrigerator. Can you or any member of this household both make and receive phone calls when at this house, apartment or mobile home? Do you have a desktop, a laptop, a tablet, a smartphone? Blah, 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 blah. And then um, they put on there the last 12 months. How much did you pay for your electric last month? And the past 12 months, what was the cost of the water and sewer? And, you know, it's so crazy because they have access to all this if they just look up the records for themselves. It's all a political scam. This world is so perverted and so sick and so d disgusting. I hate living in this world anyway. It's ungodly. It's just without God. And people are without God now. They're just totally spiritually derelict because they don't have the Holy Spirit. They just have some words about God. And then here's person number one continue. During the last four weeks, has this person been actively working for work? Have you started a job? Did this person uh, work for a few days and blah, blah, blah? Did this person work every week? Like, it's none of your business. 
<laughs> you know, who are you? We belong to God. We don't belong to you. When David did the census, it got him in trouble with God. He allowed the devil to tempt him like he's counting the people like they belong to him. We belong to God. We're not cattle in a field. We're not something that the devil is supposed to have to play with. Anyway, it really makes me mad. I, I had written down a few notes lately. I haven't felt much like doing any videos, but um, a thought come to me about Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. What does that really mean? It means faith means God speaks to you and you obey him, what he tells you, and you believe him. Not words in a Bible that he spoke to somebody else, but words that he speaks to you. Now, there's a common faith. And we can all have faith in the foundation teachings. But that means we obey God. We come to him with our heart and the spirit. And we obey where, what he tells us to do, where he leads us to go. And we don't have to lay all our cards on the table, so to speak. We don't have to be honest with the devil. We have to be wise as serpents. But as gentle as, as a lamb, we will not do evil to others. The Lord does the vindication, not us. But if you tell the devil everything that you're doing, if you turn the other cheek and you love him like you love yourself and you tell him everything, confess your sins to the devil, he's going to use you and abuse you. And if you go with him, if he asks you, then the devil's using you through religious, a religious delusion to use you and abuse you by his children because his children will use you and abuse you and take advantage of you, but you won't do it to them. So he makes a doormat out of God's kids through out of God's children, through the scriptures. But those scriptures weren't to the devil's people. They were to God's people back then. And today, those principles apply, but only through the Holy Spirit and through Holy Spirit children that are led by the living Jesus Christ, who have been regenerated by the Holy Spirit, who have the nature of God in them. And we don't do the evil that they do to us. So if you're honest before the world and you tell them everything about you, they'll ask you all your personal stuff and then they'll use it against you and they'll take it, their dirty, filthy lies that they live and they will hide it and pretend that they're righteous. It's so disgusting. But the author and finish of our faith is the living Jesus Christ. The Bible is not the author and finish of our faith. The Bible doesn't tell us where to go and how to live and what to do. That was people that were speaking from the Holy Spirit to people that have the Holy Spirit, not to you bunch of unregenerated, degenerate, corrupt seed of Lucifer that pretend to be of God because you read some scriptures. It's not to you. Your nature is ungodly, and it's proven by your actions. Your actions are very ungodly. You might speak beautiful words of faith in God, but you don't live it. It shows by your fruit, by your actions, that you're not of Christ. So, when Jesus tells you to go somewhere and do something or not do something, that is the author of your faith. And he'll finish your faith if you're controlled by him, not by people quoting scriptures, not by the Bible, not by trying to serve God in the flesh. The flesh can't receive the things of God. It's impossible. They're spiritually discerned. That was one of the thoughts I had. And then I thought about, you know, with Harlan gone, the Lord has taken very good care of me. I felt his peace so strong day before yesterday. He helps me every day. And he gives me everything to comfort me and help me and all my needs. But, you know, there's only one thing missing. And that's this hole in my heart. Without Harlan here to fellowship a true Holy Spirit person, then I hate being in this world. And I sure don't want him to have to come back to this misery and suffer anymore. And the Lord told me I would come home soon. So I long for that day. But... Without the needs of your heart, what good, like some of the principles and they spoke of in the Bible, they said, what good does it do if a man gains the world but loses his soul without the peace and love of God in your heart? Peace is a substance. Then you have nothing, even if you have all the riches in the world. And look at the political leaders that we have today. They're ridiculous. Who do we have to choose from? Of course, I wouldn't vote anyway because my king has been appointed to me. I don't vote for fleshly sinners. I honor the one that God sent for our King, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. And then don't flirt with the devil. I know you have a flesh life too, and there's vanity in your flesh. 
But don't be friends with the devil. You can be neighborly and you can be decent to people. We automatically will be. But don't become attached with him in a friendly way because the devil, if he can't hate you into sin and he'll love you into sin. And all you have to do is be joined to some evil sinner and then you'll lose your anointing. You'll lose your fellowship with God because he doesn't want you to fellowship devils. So don't be flirting with devils. But I mean, even just in a neighborly way, you don't want to become too friendly with your neighbors because that will connect you to the devil and it gives him an inroad into your life and it pollutes your spirit. And you don't be mean to him. You be kind to people and you um, and neighborly. But you don't go and eat with them. You don't fellowship with them. You don't go and do things with them. And if you start feeling them coming into your life too much, then you resist it and you keep them out of your life and out of your heart. And I don't have anything, like I said, to hide. I don't do anything wrong. I pay my taxes. I don't still kill or rob or do drugs or anything like that. The law was made for sinners. It wasn't made for Holy Ghost filled, regenerated Christians because in us, Christ lives in us and we can't sin in our heart. We might have some fleshly things that we don't like. We might eat too much or whatever, but not eat the right stuff. Or we get angry, but we don't sin. We don't do evil to them. They will to us, but it's a thing of um, the law is for the lawless. The law was made for those that do evil. If there wasn't a law against them, then, you know, look at the crime they do even with laws. And they're always killing and stealing and drugs and all manner of sexual sins and stuff. Now, we have needs in our body, but a need is different than a sin, a lust. But we don't have a lust in our heart, our flesh lust, but we quench the lust in our flesh. And God gives us the needs of our flesh and our heart. There's a big difference if you can see it. Don't get mixed up between your head and your heart. You know in your heart if you love God. And in your heart, the Spirit won't let you do evil. It might want to, but it won't let you do it. And so... Don't get mixed up between your head and your heart. Now, fleshly people, they have evil in their heart and they belong to the devil and they will do this evil, even if they don't want to, because they're of their father, the devil, and his will will they do. They have the seed of Lucifer in them. They haven't been reborn of the Holy Spirit and have God's seed in them, which is the Holy Spirit, which gives us power not to sin. It doesn't mean that we don't get angry. It doesn't mean our flesh is holy because it's not. That's why the flesh has to die and go back to the dust. But we're not controlled by the lust of our flesh. We're controlled by the living God through the Holy Spirit. We don't need somebody to take a census. It. I was thinking it was like a censor. Just like we put videos on with the truth in it. And they censor us. They won't let it hardly get out. But they let all kinds of perversion and ungodly stuff. It's incredible. Every generation gets worse. And they think they're good. Talk about the woke generation. What are they woke to? Evil, to sin, to perversion? We don't hate people, but we don't like perversion. We don't like evil. I'll have to say this, even about Bible worshipers, as ungodly as they are, they're our worst enemies because they're the ones that persecute us and kill us and hate us and tell us we're of the devil. They reject the spirit and they won't let the truth be told. So they're the worst enemy. But at least... They had some form of godliness outwardly. At least, you know, they would try to live according to the Ten Commandments and some of the things in the Bible. Parlin always said he liked Christmas time, not because he liked Christmas, because he knows it's phony and vain and fleshly, but because during Christmas time, people are usually nicer than they are the rest of the year because they're phonies. But now, I mean, they just let everything out in the flesh. Everything's okay now. People love it. You can believe what you want and do what you want, and you can claim it's of God all you want. But if you live for God in the truth, in the spirit, then they hate you, and you're considered, like around here, I feel this hatred from the neighbors. They're flocking in here this time of year. Some of them live up north, and they come down here in the wintertime, and they want you to go eat with them and go do all kinds of stuff with them. Well, I won't. You know, I'll say, hi, how are you? Hope you had a good summer or something like that. And then I go on my way. I don't fellowship them. And they'll talk about me behind my back. They'll say, well, she's snooty or she's some kind of religious nut. And that's good because it keeps them away from me. Because if they push me too far, I'm going to tell them the truth, which I have told all of them to a degree without just completely blasting them. 
And uh, you have to tell them, you know, we have to be led by the spirit of the living God and not be controlled by the Bible or people with Bibles or the flesh, but by the spirit of the living God. And when I tell them that, they don't want much to do with me because they feel condemned around me. Harlan used to say, I can, <laughs> as miserable as we feel around all these sinners, these degenerates, can you imagine how awful they feel around us? They've been around other sinners all their life and they were okay. But as soon as we move in, Christ in us condemns them and convicts them and they hate us. They want us to leave, but we have to live somewhere because we do have to live in this body of sin and death, even though we don't live after it. And if Christ is in us, it convicts and condemns the people around us. They kept wanting us to go move on down the road, go somewhere else. But you can't have a life in, of telling people this truth if you don't have an outlet to tell them. And so you have to have an internet connection and you have to have a place to, to stay. And everywhere you go, sinful and fleshly. So you sanctify your little place that you live in. You live as separate as possible, which is almost impossible in this world. And then you live by faith, which is Jesus Christ leading you by the Holy Spirit. You guys have to take the census, take it. You know, I told them what I had to and nothing more. But just know that Joseph and Mary had to take the census. And Mary was pregnant with Jesus at that time. But that's the devil system. It's not God's system. Just like money. We have to have money. But it's the devil system. The devil created money. When God had his people under the old agricultural systems, under land where we grew our crops and stayed on our own property, he would bless his people and he could curse the ones that didn't honor God and that were evil. But when Satan changed it to a money system where he blesses the evil, the rich, and then he... Uh, takes it away from all the ones that love God or the ones that aren't very much used to him. Just like on the news, Elon Musk has been fellowshipping Vladimir Putin and uh, he's given millions of dollars away and he's big friends with Trump. Well, you know, Kamala is no better. They're all just of the devil, a bunch of crooks. They just, one wants the money and the power on their side and the other wants it on theirs. Well, our king has been appointed to us. Jesus Christ is the king that God appointed for us. He's a holy king. So I don't vote for either one of those clowns. I give my honor and my obedience and submission to the living Jesus Christ, who God appointed, our creator appointed. And I live according to his will. And I'm just waiting to get home. We have another kingdom, another world that we can live in after this life. These people that love this world and they fight for this world, they're not of the kingdom of God. So don't get involved in that. Do what you have to do to live, but don't be a part of it with your heart and don't fellowship sinners. Stay away from it as much as you can, which is almost impossible, if not impossible. But in your heart, you walk and talk with the living God and he knows your heart and that's what he came to save and that's what he will judge us by. I know some of you understand this and we're all in this stupid world waiting to get out of it, those of us that love the living God. And we know that it's by the Spirit, not by the letter that kills, but by the Spirit that gives life. Thank God for the truth and for the Holy Spirit. I started out for Jesus Christ to run Full of joy and love for the good Be over, be peace at last.